John and I are sailing Europe, embracing what it's like to live on board a boat. We started our journey in Spain, but for the last three days, we've traveled from Mallorca to Corsica in France. It has been a 72 hour journey, taking turns on the helm as we ventured across the Mediterranean Sea, which is our biggest crossing yet. So we cannot wait for some serious rest when we arrive. So I thought now would be an epic opportunity to welcome you inside our favorite room on board for a little tour, our master cabin to show you where we sleep. And then I'm here to answer some of your questions on the bow, like how did we get here? How did we save up? And our future plans ahead of the new year. We could and watch the stars dance from the moon. Well, good morning. This is where we sleep on our boat. She's a huge queen bed. It is ridiculously comfortable. And we are in the main cabin, which is all the way at the bow of the boat. And our bedroom is pretty big. We're in the master. So we have a total of four cabins on the boat and each has its own ensuite. So two are at the rear. Our main cabin is right about here and the captain's quarters is up at the bow. I have to say being on board this boat literally feels like a hotel. It's so big. Yes, this is where we sleep right here. Obviously we have the reading lights as well, which is great. We've got this awesome headboard. And we also have some space under the bed, but I'll show you some of the little features that we have on board that make it as snug as a bug in a rug. Let's begin our tour of our bedroom. Starting off with our windows, we have three on board around the sides, and we also have two on the roof. And when there are mosquitoes around, we have the blinds then open like this and these protect us from any of the bugs so we have these locks on them then we just open them up and then you pull over the hatch this little area allows me to put down little items next to my side of the bed and you've just joined us we are on board a Juno 55 and we're sailing her around the western med in our last episode, we crossed over from Spain to France and we're going to be arriving any minute. The Citadel of Bonifacio is right on our horizon. One of my favorite things about sleeping on board this boat is the fact that we actually have aircon and we're able to use it when we're at sea because we have a generator on board but when we're on land and we're tied up to a marina we just plug in the outlets and we can have the aircon running throughout the boat for as long as we like it's a real luxury and the other great thing about having the aircon is that you can have a dehumidifier so when it gets moist in here you can just turn the dehumidifier on dehumidifies the boat and keeps all the cabinetry really dry so we've never really had an aircon on board our boat before back on Takana we had the bare essentials so on this boat that we're on now we have an aircon a generator we don't have a water maker but one is getting installed really soon while I'm looking this way we also have a really cool feature that sits just at the end of our bed and that is TV. So this TV is mounted on the wall. I will admit we don't really watch much TV because we have a TV out in the saloon area. There's always too much to do on land and there's always, always something to do on a boat, whether that be traveling to our next destination, cleaning, editing these videos. So yeah, we don't really watch much TV, but sometimes we do like putting our feet up. This is the master cabin, which means we have our master head. So if you need to go to the bathroom during the night or before night when you're brushing your teeth. <laughs> Watch the sky fade into the night with you, my arms. This is our bathroom or our head. Uh, and as you can see, there's plenty of space. As part of letting you know where we sleep, uh, I thought I'd tell you my little regime that I do every morning as well. In these cupboards, I have all my things. So I'm just putting some sunscreen on. So every morning I wash my face with a cleanser. I usually run a coil through my hair. This crossing meant we were literally off grid for three days. So no reception and no connection to the outside world. 
It's not often we get this isolation and silence. And so I thought it would be a great idea to answer some of your questions sent through on Instagram before we left. So this is a really good question uh, from Matt McKenna 90. How much did you guys save to make this dream a reality? We're not far from land now. So let's squeeze a couple of questions in. I remember when I was about 20, that was a conversation that John and I had about starting a high interest savings account. So we've been really saving since we were 20. We then worked really hard to be able to get uh, a little deposit for a unit or a townhouse. The one thing that John always really talked about, and I think that rings really true, time is money. And so that is why we tried to save as much money as we could throughout our 20s so that we could essentially like buy back time and not stuck in the rat race. We really tried to turn black the clock and save as many pennies as we could while we were younger. I guess this isn't like financial advice, it's just our thoughts around saving. I remember when we used to go to like the shopping centers, I would always want to get like a juice. Hank, I want some juice. <laughs> and I would wait until we would go home so we could drink water just to save that $7. You know, we sacrificed that urge to spend that dopamine hit to buy that outfit, to buy that handbag. I remember when I was at university, I spent months and months doing work experience at different TV stations before I was able to land my first job. The Gold Coast Airport's $100 million redevelopment. I uh, then was in my career as a TV journalist for like 11 years before we ended up buying Takana. Um, John also worked in the mines to be able to save for his flying ticket, his, uh, his private pilot's license, you know, so we've both just grinded away to be able to be in a position where we were to buy Takana, which was really um, fortunate. But right now we don't have a boat and we're currently able to experience this beautiful boat with Janelle, which we are so appreciative of to be on this gorgeous 55. So yeah, I hope that answers your question. With the new year, I really loved this question too. What are you looking forward to? After the series, we have a lot more travel to look forward to. I think John and I want to go to Georgia, Tbilisi and Baku. We're also going to be doing some hiking through New Zealand. This is like a bucket list item. It's going to be brutal, it's going to be wild, but I'm really excited to share with you more adventure. So yeah feeling really like a gypsy at the moment. My laptop is, it's my livelihood. It's where I do my voiceovers. It's where I create my YouTube videos. <laughs> as long as I've got my suitcase and my laptop, I'm good. Right on the horizon, you can see Bonifacio. After 72 hours of sailing across the Mediterranean Sea, we've made it. It's our biggest crossing yet. Okay, are we ready? And we're finally going to step foot on land again. This time, it's gonna be France, a new country for us. Change this flag as well. A new country that we've never sailed to before. But before our arrival, we're taking down the code zero. So we'll put away all those lines, wrap it up and uh, put it back down into the captain's quarters or the anchor locker. It has a large surface area that captures the wind. Oh my gosh, check this out. Oh. And it allowed us to sail here when we were experiencing calmer winds along the way. <laughs> By the way, does anyone else close these hatches with their feet? Dad, how salty is everything? So salty. I left you out, out from Bonifacio now and the water is just like a swimming pool. It should be a nice few days. I think the weather is supposed to be pretty calm, so it should be nice. Just cleaning up the boat, getting ready to tie up and go sightseeing in Bonifacio, which is good. Looking forward to it. There are not many days that you get quite like this that are just calm. So let's go over the plan together, where we're going to stay for the night and how much is it going to cost us. So once you get off the loo, babe, we'll have a debrief with everybody. No one wants to see that. It's going to hide that starboard hole. We're going to get in about five o'clock. Do you guys want to go straight to the marina? We have decided to book a marina for two nights. It is eye-wateringly expensive. It's more than 200 euro a night. So we're gonna make the most of it. We're gonna show you around the town and the city, take you to all the little best places. Bonifacio is known for its location, atop white limestone cliffs. The citadel, a fortress, converted now into a town, 
overlooks the Strait of Bonifacio, which separates Corsica from the island of Sardinia. I cannot wait to turn that corner. Oh my gosh. We are just putting all the fenders on, ready to make our way into Port de Bonifacio. So there is a lot of traffic. The AIS has gone crazy. We might even have to turn it off in a second. Just gonna put the uh, 360 camera on. Deep into your oh my gosh, this is absolutely spectacular. This is like the best arrival into Bonifacio. I know the sails aren't up, okay. But seriously, this is pure magic. I wish I could stop time and stay in this moment. Never think about going on, just stay with me for a little while. Look at this super yacht. Oh wow guys, we have officially made it to France. Ah, I know, we're in France. I can't believe we're in France. So proud. You would never know approaching it that there's a giant like waterway and marina in there. I know, I am literally so excited to turn around that corner. I have no idea what to expect. First international boat trip. Pick. Well, let's see, we've got a tarp first. Now I have just one last question of yours to answer before we show you Bonifacio, and I'd love to hear your opinion on it too. What's your favorite destination for 2024? We obviously can't wait to show you around France and Italy, but in the meantime... So this is such an interesting question. So John and I have now been able to sail in Australia, the Bahamas, Greece, and now the Western Med. I personally think, hands down, Greece is my favorite place in Europe for sailing so far. Mind you, we still haven't experienced Turkey and we still haven't experienced Croatia. So I'm really hoping that there's some of our bucket list sailing destinations that we'd love to take you to in the future. On that though, I'm sure a lot of you out there have a lot more sailing experience than we have. And if you have, in the description below, I'd love to know what your favorite place to sail in the world is. And I think it'd be a really great little place for everyone to be able to go to and read each other's comments and like, like the ones that you agree on so that we can see which country, first of all, is the top destination. And then maybe second of all, what location in that destination was your favorite. For example, my favorite place to sail in is obviously Greece. And I think my top two locations would have to be Folagandros and Milos in the Kokodas. So thank you so much Sailing Kui for that question. And make sure you follow us on Instagram because we're always running little giveaways and Q and A's. And also if you'd love to support the channel, please go and follow us over on Patreon. These videos are made possible because of our amazing Patreon fam. They make these videos available and free for us all to enjoy and watch. So if you'd like to go back and watch our Greece, our Australian or Bahamas series during the holiday break, catch up with a bit of a movie marathon perhaps, I have made playlists for you. Otherwise, let us know if you've watched them all. We will be back in a few weeks to officially reunite here in Bonifacio after our little recharge. Happy New Year, guys. Thanks for an epic year. Left on. <laughs> <laughs>